Welcome to SQL Shorts. In this video, we will understand the deadlock acts in SQL. First, we will understand what is the meaning of a deadlock. A deadlock occurs when two or more transactions are waiting for each other to release the same resources, resulting in a deadlock situation where none of the transactions can proceed. Deadlocks can cause significant performance issues and can impact the overall efficiency of a database system. There are two types of deadlocks. First one is hard deadlocks. A hard deadlock occurs when two or more transactions are waiting for each other to release the same set of resources. This can occur when two transactions lock resources in a different order, resulting in a situation where neither transaction can proceed. Second one is soft deadlocks. A soft deadlock occurs when two or more transactions are waiting for each other to release a resource that is not currently available. This can occur when a transaction is waiting for a resource that is locked by another transaction, or when a transaction is waiting for a resource that is currently being used by another transaction. In both types of deadlocks, the transactions involved will wait indefinitely for the resources they need, causing the database system to become unresponsive and unpredictable. You can resolve the deadlocks by following two techniques. First one is to identify deadlocks. SQL Server provides several tools and techniques for identifying deadlocks, including SQL Server Profiler and SQL Server Management Studio. Using these tools, you can identify the transactions that are involved in the deadlock, the resources they are waiting for, and the order in which they are requesting those resources. Second one is to resolve deadlocks once you have identified the deadlocks. One of the most common ways to resolve deadlocks is by implementing a deadlock prevention strategy which involves identifying the transactions that are likely to cause deadlocks and modifying their behavior to avoid them. Let's understand some best practices to avoid deadlocks. 1. Minimize transaction time. Long-running transactions are more likely to cause deadlocks than short transactions. Therefore, it is best practice to minimize the transaction time as much as possible. This can be done by breaking down long transactions into smaller ones or using a timeout mechanism to ensure that transactions do not wait indefinitely for resources. 2. Use appropriate indexing. Proper indexing can help prevent deadlocks. By using appropriate indexes, you can reduce the time required to access data, which can help minimize transaction time and reduce the likelihood of deadlocks occurring. 3. Avoid implicit transactions. Implicit transactions can cause deadlocks, so it is best practice to avoid them. Instead, use explicit transactions, which provide greater control over the transaction's behavior. 4. Use proper locking techniques. Proper locking techniques can help prevent deadlocks. By using the appropriate locking mechanism, you can ensure that transactions are accessing the required resources in the right order. 5. Increase resource availability. Increasing resource availability can help prevent deadlocks. This can involve increasing the memory or processing power of the server, adding additional disks or storage, or upgrading the network infrastructure. 6. Implement deadlock detection and resolution. Finally, it is essential to implement a deadlock detection and resolution mechanism. This involves configuring SQL Server to detect and resolve deadlocks automatically. SQL Server provides several mechanisms for detecting and resolving deadlocks, including the use of lock escalation, lock timeouts, and the use of a deadlock detection and resolution process. I hope now you understood the concept of deadlocks and how to avoid them. Thank you. Please like, share and subscribe. Click on the bell icon for more.